This is our Model 105 mechanical bender, and it's probably our most popular unit. A lot of times when you're looking at the advertisement, all mechanical benders look the same. They are not. We're going to show you some of the features on this unit, try to explain to you the best we can how to use it. First of all, this unit comes in two models. A 105 standard that has half inch thick arms and a 105 heavy duty that has 5 eighths thick main arms. In the handle extension, we have a special bushing that's made. It's a steel bushing. It's impregnated with graphite. It's welded into the handle. Mm -hmm. It makes an extremely sturdy unit and resists wear quite well. Also, on your swing arms, we have a recess machined into the bottom arm. We have a bushing that's installed. Your swing arm is not rubbing on top of the other arm. It's rotating on a bushing. Also, this is our new degree ring that we just came out with just the other day. This is an extremely rigid unit. It's 3 eighths of an inch thick steel. It bolts between the bender and the stand. It's been machined to make sure that it's perfectly flat and then engraved in degrees. The unit has an adjustable stop for setting it for repeat bends. It unbolts and it will bolt anywhere along the ring that you want it to be. It's telescoping so you can drop it out of the way. And it has a fine adjustment on it. We have a pointer assembly that fits onto the die and a little tab on the top to tighten it up. What we're going to do is we're going to start off and explain to you about the backing blocks and the die setups. Any die is available in three configurations, in a 120 wraparound, a 180 wraparound, which is a half a circle, and 240 wraparound, which is this die that you see right here. If you want to complete a 180 degree bend, you need a 240 die. The backing blocks are machined so that one side is perfectly straight, the other is machined with a curvature to fit the curvature of the tube and the die you are bending. Okay. Before we load the tube in the bender, we want to show you one other point that's very important. Underneath the handle, there's an adjustable collar. And that collar will raise or lower the handle of the system. You want to make sure that the handle is adjusted so the swing arm comes all the way in without touching the handle. Once you do that, the die is in. The drive pin is in the first hole of the die through the swing arm. You're ready to load your tube. On your backing block, it has the word top stamped on it. It always has to face to the top or it will wrinkle your tube. You put the backing block over the outside of the tube, press in as hard as you can, and whatever is necessary to pull back to get the pin in through it and the main arm is all that's necessary to get it in. The last thing you put on is the U-strap. It goes over. Make sure the pin is all the way through the strap, or otherwise it'll damage the strap. At this point, you pull the die bender out. Make sure that all the slack is taken off, and you're ready to set your pointer. Slip the pointer over the edge of the block on the die. Set your pointer at zero, and you're ready to bend. Go ahead, Clint.
Before we remove the tube, there's two things that we wanted to show. One was we didn't use the, dis the stop unit on, on the degree ring this time because we were doing a 90 degree bend and if we had set it, it would have been so far up under the die, you wouldn't be able to see it. The other thing is, when you're marking your tube for the bend, you always line it up with the edge. But on this type of bender, the bend does not start exactly on the edge, it starts inboard. So if you wanted to do a 90 degree bend, you're actually going to be a certain amount of degrees past it because you have to take up for two things, the late start and the spring back. To release it, all you do is push it back. Remove your pin and your back and block. Remove your use strap. As you can see, the 105 is not a very fast bender, but it certainly does a quality job at a very reasonable price.